Hello, my name is Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. I've also owned a booth at an antique mall for over seven years. I have a whole bunch of videos here on YouTube to help you if you're interested in starting a booth or if you already have one. Over those seven years, there are so many things I've learned. Today, we're gonna put it together with my five things I've learned. I hope you find it helpful, and if you own a booth, I hope you can relate. Number one, and this is so hard because there are so many pretty pictures of booths out there. There is so much to see, but when you have a booth, it needs to be yours and your style. You need to really follow your heart on your booth. No two booths should look alike. What fun is that? You want to go to a mall where there's a huge variety so that you can find what you love and that's where you will shop. When I first started, I fell into the trap of so many other booth owners. I went on Pinterest, I found some cool displays and I tried to copy them, except you know what? It never really worked because my style was not exactly the style of those booth owners. Also, another thing I have to tell you is so many people will say, Christina, can you give me some advice? Can you look at my booth? Can you look at my pictures? Can you tell me what I need to do? I can, but that would be to make it look like my booth. It's really important that you develop your style. So great, now you're not getting any help. And I've also told you maybe getting advice from other people might not be that great. So now what are you gonna do? My advice is this, go on Pinterest. There's nothing wrong. And if you wanna check out my Pinterest page, I will uh, put a link in the description box below. There's lots of great inspiration and display ideas, but what I recommend is go through Pinterest and just pin all the stuff you like. Even if it's not a vintage display, maybe it's a clipping of someone's home or something you like or something that makes you go, oh cool, just pin away. And then really, once you've done all of that, go through and analyze your style. What is it? What do you like? And another thing I want to tell you, if you are just starting out, don't compare to other booth owners that have been in it for years. I honestly think, and I'll insert a few pictures of my very first booth here, so you understand that we all start somewhere, but I really think you'll get it. Your style evolves. If you're in a new booth or a new space, I think it takes at least a year to figure out how to put things in, how to make it work, what the best display is, what the flow is. And really every time you sell a big piece or you bring in something new, that's gonna change and you're gonna have to reevaluate. So be nice to yourself while you're following your style, but find your style. Do you like bright colors? Do you like neutrals? Do you like a really elegant style? Are you more rustic and salvagey? I really feel I have a split personality and that's why I like a big enough booth display so I can kind of show off everything I like. And you don't have to worry if it's gonna work. If you are being you and it's authentically your style, it's all gonna come together. It's gonna look fabulous and people are going to find your booth. Are you enjoying this video? If so, take a second and click that like button. Also subscribe. If you click the bell, you'll be notified every time I put up a new video. And it really helps me to continue to grow my channel to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. You never know, number two, what's gonna sell. If you knew what would sell, you'd be totally rich, right? Because everything you'd bring in, it would sell. And I've talked to so many other booth owners who echo the sentiment, you just never know. Case in point, in my very first booth display, we're talking over seven years ago, I had a magazine holder that I painted and I loved it. And guess what? It never sold. It never sold until seven years later. 
and then it sold. And it was one of those items where I was like, oh, I took it home and then I was doing a display and I just needed stuff and I really didn't have enough, so I brought it in. I put it in a display and it sold. This was an item that I was just gonna donate or throw out. So what my advice is to you is this, rotate your items, take things in and out, move stuff around, and sometimes don't give up on items. People always say, well, how long do you wait on your items before you repaint them or you get rid of them? I've found, <laughs> and maybe this, this might be the advice, is that if I have in my head that that thing is never gonna sell and I really, the next time I go in, I should donate it, it usually sells. So maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe you need to determine that that item is never gonna sell and boom. Other times there are items you bring in and you think they'll sell and they do. There's no rhyme or reason. One thing you can do that'll kind of help you, especially if you're starting out maybe a little, is if you get a list of everything that sells in your booth from your mall, read it through. What are some items that are hot and selling for you? <laughs> it might not be for other booth owners. Sometimes I've talked to people and I've said, hey, I'm selling a lot of, are you? And they're like, oh no, I can't sell those at all. So it's for you. And even though it sells one month, it doesn't mean it'll sell, but you might notice some patterns. Those are patterns that you need to pay attention to because some of those things are things that you need to always have in your booth. For me, one of the things that always seems to sell are books. Old books for me sell all the time. So I always keep them in my booth and those are things I'm always looking for. Number three, let's talk about inventory. I know when I was first starting out as a booth owner, I would hear from other dealers how their new inventory was taking over their home and their garage and their car and all their free space. And I was determined this would never happen to me, right? I was gonna be organized. I was gonna be on top of it. I wouldn't buy more than I could sell. It's gonna happen. It might take some time for you, but it's gonna happen. Your number three tip is your new inventory is gonna take over your home and you really have to start planning for it immediately. Think about how quickly you need to process it. I try to process my new items within a week. I've also arranged some systems because obviously sometimes I'll get off season things and so I have a place to store them, like the summer stuff if I'm buying it in winter. I have a video about how I organize my basement yeah, you wanna see my basement? You wanna see the mess that I deal with constantly? Um, I'll put a link here. I also have a video about how I deal with my studio space, I call it. And that's my processing area and where I'm putting items for live sales too. You need to come up with a plan for your new inventory or it is going to strangle you, attack you, and upset you. If I have my stuff everywhere, it just overwhelms me and then I feel like I can't do anything. So even if you're just starting out and you don't really have those new items everywhere or you're bringing in a bag or two at a time, still find a system that'll work for you so your new inventory doesn't overwhelm you. We're on to number four. I always say your booth is never finished ever. Your whole booth is never finished. It's always gonna be a work in progress and don't be too hard on yourself. But my number four tip is, if you finally get that perfect display, that one that's just perfect and organized and just looks beautiful and you just wanna take a thousand pictures of it, do it. Take the pictures the minute you finish the display because the stuff in that display is gonna sell fast. And if you don't take advantage of your beautiful display and get all the shots for social media, it's gonna be gone. And then you'll have all these regrets. But I had that perfect display. Sometimes we get sad when things sell, but then we realize, wait a minute, that's the whole business. You want your stuff to sell. So don't get upset. We're already on to tip number five. This is gonna be the hardest job you've ever done. I mean, ever. 
if you really want to be a good booth owner, if you really want to hustle and make the money and do all the things and have the nice booth, it's going to be the hardest job ever. But hopefully you're in this for the right reasons and you love doing all of the things. I mean, I love junking. I can tell I get irritable if I don't go out junking, if I don't go out thrifting, if I don't get a good thrift haul. I love display. I love color. I love putting things together. And so I do love every aspect. There's a few things I love not as much like washing and pricing and those kind of things, but it's going to be hard. I think a lot of people get into the business and think, oh, I'll just put things in a booth and, and they'll sell and I'll make some side money. It's gonna be work. It's hard work. If you're thinking about starting up a booth, just be advised, make sure you really love all of the aspects and then make sure you're rewarding yourself with them. Make sure you're going to the flea markets if you love them. Make sure you're uh, keeping things organized and on top of it so you're not feeling overwhelmed at home too. And take some time off from the business too. It is totally worth it. I'm not trying to talk anyone out of this. I love this job and seriously so many mornings I wake up and I'm like just pinch me that I get to do this for a living. I get to go to so and so's house and look at all this cool old stuff and decide if I want it and then I get to bring it back and make it pretty and find it new homes. So it's really my passion and I love it and I wouldn't change it for the world but owning a booth is a lot of hard work so just be prepared for that. And my other tip to help you deal with this job that is so hard but can be so rewarding is make some friends with other people in the business. Find other booth owners that you can talk to about all of the issues. They're gonna help you, they're gonna support you, and sometimes they're just gonna go, yep, me too, when the times are tough. So it's really important to have a network and to have a support system your family and friends, if they're not in this business, they just might not get it. I hope you've enjoyed these five tips. Um, if you have any questions about owning a booth or ideas for things that you'd like me to cover in future videos, please put them in the comments below and we can kind of help one another. I hope that this has not discouraged you, but it's inspired you to just get out there to salvage, repurpose, create, and work on your booth. Thanks so much for watching.